Well, hello, fishing freaks, and welcome on back to the channel. Today, we're going to be doing some cooking, and we're gonna be answering the age-old question of what tastes better, a crappie or a bass? Now, the reason I'm even making this video of bass versus crappie is really because we ended up, me and my buddy, catching a lot of bass the other day when we were crappie fishing. We were looking back on the calendar and we said, man, this is around the date where we really smashed some crappie. Let's go try it. When we got out there, we were catching a few crappie here and there, but it was just bass after bass after bass after bass after bass. And it was all on the snacky swimmer, guys, mostly. I would say 80, 90% on that snacky swimmer. You guys have seen that bay before just chunking it around the banks. And we're getting fry garter largemouth and we're just, we're catching a lot of spotted bass that I think we're getting into the spawn. And to be honest, spotted bass, I haven't had them in a long time, but they're, from what I remember, they're not that bad. And because we were not catching as many crappie, we just decided to load up on some spotted bass. And me personally, I don't like to keep a largemouth ever to eat unless I'm in a dire situation. And the reason is, it's because I've cleaned some of them in the past and about half of them have worms. Now on crappie, I can tell you 95% of the crappie that I clean don't have worms. There's only been a few cases where I've opened them up and seen worms and it still didn't deter me from eating them, eating them because I love them so much. But a largemouth, especially like a grassy lake largemouth, Ugh. So let's head over to the cutting board and let's fillet a bass for the first time in a while. Let's see if we got any surprises in there. Alrighty, let's start with the crappie. Fresh crappie on the board. Comment down below if you know what that's from. I want to tell you guys my preferred method for cleaning fish. Here's what I like to do. Here's my setup. I get a little bowl and I just fill it with some water. That's to put the flays in. I like an electric fillet knife if I've got, let's say, over five, five fish. Then I'll go back after I take a fillet off and I cut out the rib bones. I'll just go around quickly with a, just a standard little knife, just around the rib bones, just quickly and I'll throw it in that water. And then that'll get the initial kind of stuff off of it. And then I'll go back and I'll rinse them later. I'll strain them. Have me a little bucket. I'll throw the scraps in the bucket. Sometimes I'll throw them into our, uh, our mulch pile or I'll just take them down to the lake and, and throw them in the lake. I'd love to have a dock one day where I'm doing this. Just send the scraps to the catfish and then I throw out catfish lines later, catch the catfish, keep the cycle going. You know what I'm saying? Just perpetual catching catching, cleaning, cooking, eating, repeating. That's the ultimate goal. But this is the system I've got for the house right now. Let's get out a spotted bass. Now, if you guys don't know how to identify a spotted bass, I will show you some of the characteristics that you can easily tell. Spotted bass will typically have a little different scale pattern and you, you'll see a a, a variation in their lateral line and they'll have some some bars almost look like light stripes below that lateral line as well and one of the main things you can tell is uh, on their tongue they'll have a small patch on their tongue and you need to stick your finger in there and it feels like teeth and that is a true indicator of a spotted bass so if you're on the lake and you're not really sure just lip your fish give them a sniff and then touch their tongue and if you feel those teeth on the tongue that's how you know it's very I hate to say it but gosh they're so easy to fillet they're like little hot dogs so we'll just run our fillet knife down there and <laughs> flip them around and uh, I'll, I'll, I'll share with you kind of a it's a slightly morbid tip but if you're having trouble finding a place to grip your fish uh, their eye socket, if you put your thumb in there, is actually a pretty good halt. That goes for any fish, crappie, bass, walleye. And I like to get my uh, fish to the edge of my table so I have the most control over the, the level of my knife. One of the uh, mechanics of filleting on a table like this 
is if you do it out, if you do it out here, whoa, if you do it out here, you don't have as much room to get down. See how my, my hand is gonna prevent uh, a 90 degree angle. So I, if I get my hand out here, then I can really slide easier. So that's just a little mechanics tip to get the most out of your meat. So I'm gonna go to the edge of my table here. And that is just gonna fillet easier than just about anything out there, the bass. And this is actually very clean meat coming off of this spotted bass right now. So I'll cut off this rib cage. Oh my gosh, this meat looks beautiful, guys. This actually looks amazing. Look how clean that spotted bass meat is. Can you see that? That looks beautiful. That's awesome. Okay, we'll put that in there. That is almost indistinguishable. I'm gonna have to separate these because I'm not gonna be able to tell, quite honestly, between the two because we got some pretty good sized crappie in here. This is the crappie. This is the spotted bass. And the, cro the crappie has a little bit more of a V there. I like to leave that. So we might be able to tell, but honestly, the spotted bass is even cleaner. There's a little bit of pink meat in the, uh, in the crappie. So my dad, LFD, he's gonna be cooking these fish up and I wonder if he's gonna be able to tell the difference. Absolutely zero worms or nasty things in that filet right there. Fish and Freaks, after cleaning our fish, we are here at the official fish cooking station here at LFD's house. This place has cooked a lot of fish in its day, and this pot is really old and it has cooked a lot of fish. And today we're gonna be using the Guggen Fish Fry. You guys have, if you haven't tried this yet, this, this stuff is good, it is really tasty. And we have a we have a spicy and we have original. And if you want to get a discount on it, you can use my promo code LFG at GoogleSquad.com. That's linked down below. Uh, if you're local and you go to the Crumb Shop too, we we got it in there. So uh, first batch actually sold out. We got a restock, so it's it's really good. You guys should try it. Cooking fish really simple. Um, the directions are basically on the back of the package, but if you follow me, you probably already know what we are about to do. So, what LFD doesn't know is that there are spotted bass in here and he really can't even tell. Look at this just gorgeous meat. LFD? Yes? Let me ask you a question. Okay. How many bass have you eaten in your life? Bass? Bass. Do you used to eat bass as a young man? Yeah, well, you know, when I was growing up, if you caught a bass, it was like a tasty morsel. Okay, yeah. you just put it in the crease. You just do it. Yeah. Well, I will tell you that there are some bass in here oh, mixed really? in with the crappie. I know you can't even tell. Well, you can't even tell right now. You look, might you might be able to tell when you start cooking. It must be pretty small bass. I think I'll be able to pick out the bass. You think so? Dad has eaten a lot of fish in his day. I've eaten a lot of fish too. This is this is a way of life here at the Rackley household. So we're gonna wait for the grease to get hot. We will mix our fish in the batter. I personally don't really use a binder or anything like that. I just like to get the water off of the fish and I use a strainer. And by the way, this right here, you, you guys probably see me use this a lot. Uh, a fishing freak sent this to me and I gotta say it is one of the most useful tools for fishermen uh, that I've ever used. I'm not sponsored by this company, uh, but it is made by Game Maker. And uh, it, it is awesome. It's actually got two. Daddy. Hey, buddy. Fish. It's fish. Yeah, come here. <laughs> oh, yeah. And little Ben loves fish. He likes, he likes little fish nuggets. Yeah. We're going to be cooking some fish. Oh. Yeah, and he's at the stage right now where he just wants to be involved with, every, with everything. He wants to know how it works. It's mechanical. <laughs> he wants to figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> you like to figure that stuff He's out, funny. don't you? You funny. <laughs> oh, did you too? <laughs> <laughs> you so funny. You so funny. 
My son right now, he's at the age where I started catching my first fish. And so like when my dad's around, like right now, like yesterday he was, he had my fishing rod and he was playing with it in the pool. It's the circle, man. It's, it's, uh, it's the three generations right here coming together. There's a lot of family traditions out there, but catching and cooking fish is one of ours. Yeah, buddy. Huh? It's windy. Yeah, I know. It's real windy. It's too windy to be on the lake. That's why we're we're cooking fish right now. Oh, fish! That's fish. Oh. Mm-hmm. You look good. Yeah, it's good. It's going to be good. All right, we're going to test the grease right now. Let's see if it is ready. It is. Oh, it is sizzling. Yeah. If you got a uh, thermometer, you can check it. 350 is a great temperature to cook fish. Doing this. Old Southern boys might say, oh, they all cook up the same, man. <laughs> I can remember if we caught a five pound bass, it was like, oh my gosh, it's a monster. And it's going in the grease. Oh yeah, you ate every one of them. <laughs> You feel like if I lined up a catfish, a crappie, and a bass out of the fry, you'd be able to tell. Catfish definitely, uh, according to how big the bass is. Is a small bass similar size? Mm -hmm. I'm not sure I, not sure I know. Okay, we're gonna find out today, ladies and gentlemen. We are going to find out today if we can tell the difference after they're cooked. This could revolutionize bass fishing. Keep more bass. Yeah, that's a big debate, you know, do, do, uh, do you keep small fish to help fisheries? Uh, I, I honestly think we catch so many fish that end up dying anyways, that it's, you might as well cook them. Especially in tournaments. Might as well have fish fry after a tournament up in the summer. Those, those fish are gonna die. You know, have you ever seen those pictures of those guys uh, at the tournaments, you know, oh, yeah. with Forest Wood and that group holding up the stringers of fish? Uh huh. They were all dead. Yeah, the old, the old school. Like, yeah, yeah. Back in, back in the day, Roll Martin, Bill Dance, and the first, and the first. The, so Ray Scott, if you guys don't know who that is, uh, he organized BASS, and those, those OG anglers basically revolutionized fishing tournaments where you would, you would keep them and let them go. That was a new idea, and they would have ten fish stringers back in the day and they would just keep, I mean, you come in with, with a stringer. Golden Krispies have occurred, folks. Dad is so, so good at, at recognizing them, recognizing them. He's already got the first batch out. Just goes on color. When they start floating and they turn that golden crispy color, they're ready to go. That's right, Golden really? Krispy. That's, uh, as the name implies, Golden Krispy. Wait, wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, what, do you, what do you have right there? I, I think this is a bass. Okay. Dad is so excited. He's just about to take a bite. All right. You think it's a bass? Go ahead and take a bite. We'll see. Oh, yeah. That might be a crappie. That is so good. You think it's a crappie? Are you, are you unsure? This is a small bass, but it tastes like a crappie. Okay, now here's one. Here's one right here that's probably a 15 incher. This is a solid keeper. I know. I know this is a bass right here. You got a turkey call, bud? Yeah. There you go. It's big C's call. We're just having all sorts of outdoor generations of outdoors right here. I <laughs> tried it. All right, I'm gonna try this piece. I know this is a bass. Did it good? Does it taste like a tournament victory? Tastes a little bassy to me. All right. 
Now I'm going to try a crappie piece. That's what I did. This is the ultimate. You want to try a piece, buddy? Yeah. Oh, all right. You want to try a piece? What do you think? Good. It's good. You like it? Mm. Yeah. Okay. All right. He likes the crappie. Now let me try my crappie piece. That's crappie. I can taste the difference. You want to try the bass? All right. Let me let Daddy try a little bit. Right. What do you think? A BB. The BB? Yeah. You want another bite? What do you think about that? Oh no. Okay, he's picking up the piece that he dropped. Put it in his mouth. You like that one? Yeah. You do like it? You want another bite? Bye, baby. Okay, my son is all about bass and crappie, apparently. I feel like I can tell slightly. It's just slightly... This like, is here, a bass. Try, try, this, big, this, try this big bass. This is a bigger bass. This is a so bigger bass. Let's try that. that tastes. That's a big old 15... 15 and a half, 16 inches. It does taste a little fishier. Like a little bit yeah. grassier, fishier yeah. to me. Yep. But it's, it's still good. It's still good. It's still good. It also has, I, I feel like it has more oil in it. A bass has a little bit more like oily. That, that, yeah. Very, very, uh, very accurate statement. A ten and a half inch. Crappie. Woo! There ain't nothing cleaner than that. My goodness. There is no gamey taste. It's amazing. And the texture, it just seems to melt in your mouth. It just melts. That's what I love about it. Just a little, little crappie like that, it just melts in your mouth. That right there just can't be beat, y'all. Well, if you thought bass were gonna somehow slip past my taste buds, taste better than crappie, you would be wrong. The flavor was good. The flavor was all there. So I will be eating bass again. And next time you keep some spotted bass, you may wanna try it. So if you wanna have a good time, just catch some fish, get you a little jig head, throw you one of these snacky swimmers around the bank right now, this time of year, everything's on the bank. You can catch catfish, you can catch grabby, white bass, bass, I mean, you can catch everything. It's really fun to do. And if you're in the mood to try a new fish batter, I definitely recommend our new fish fry, the Golden Crispy Mix. Ooh, big boy, big boy. What did you think about them fish? Good. They were good, weren't they? Can you say, see you later, fish and freaks? Thank you. Thank you, <laughs> Hey, thank you for being here. Subscribe to the channel. We'll see you later. See you later. See you later, guys. I'll catch you on the next one. Good job. Yeah. Good job.